All right, guys, welcome. Welcome to today's live session. It is our open trade room, our Tuesday trade room. It is August 25th, Tuesday, August 25th, and we're going to be taking a look at the markets today. So for uh, all those that are new, uh, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we like to do these uh, open trade rooms on Tuesday so that everybody can come and join, see how we trade. We don't hold anything back. There's no secrets. You know, there's no you know, there's no secret sauce or secret formula. We're just doing, just doing normal trading using price action. We're using Renko's as our charts um, instead of candlesticks. And then we have a couple of custom indicators that we use as well. Um, I've got all of the students live with me in the Zoom channel. So it's good to see them this morning. What's up guys and gals. Um, and I do this with them every day. So this is just a chance for you guys to see what we do basically every day in the New York session. And we'll be talking about trades, we'll be taking trades, we'll be doing our pre-market prep routine, which is very important. But uh, without further ado, without, let's not stand on ceremony and let's jump right into it. Now, if you want to do this with us every day, if you want to trade along with us every day, if you want to learn how to trade Rankos, or maybe you want to brush up on your price action skills, go to zenfxtrading.com. You can enroll in either of our courses. Um, and if you have any questions about it, just let me know. But I'm not here to... Uh, I'm not here to sell you anything. I'm just here to trade with you. So let's go ahead and jump right in and start trading. So the first thing that we're going to do this morning, um, or let me just do a real quick outline for everybody that hasn't joined with us before, just so you know what's going to happen. Um, we're going to do our pre-market prep routine. Uh, it basically, it's going to fill up the whole hour. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at, first, we're going to look at news events. Then we're going to look at the overnights of a price movement on the candlestick charts. We're going to check the um, we're going to check the, uh, the dollar index. And then uh, we're also going to then look at our actual templates and look for setups. We're going to set up our watch list. And then by the end of the hour, we'll have everything in place that when the market kicks off, we'll be ready to go. Now, if we do find any trades that happen along the way, we'll take them like we did yesterday. And we'll talk about those trades and uh, how well they're doing. All right, let's go ahead and start. So the first thing that we want to look at is actually, oops, is our uh, top three indices, the Dow, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We want to see what the implied open is going to be. There's, that can sometimes give us a good idea or an indication as to where the dollar is going to go in the New York session. Today, we have a bit of conflict as the NASDAQ is showing us a bearish implied open, but the Dow and the S&P are showing us a bullish implied open. So a bit of a bit of a conflict of opinion there between the, the three major indices. So what we'll do is we'll take a look at the actual dollar index itself, and then we'll go from there. Let's take a look at the news events. Before we do that, we'll take a look at news events and see what's going on today. Um, I like to check two different news event sites. This one is Forex or myfxbook.com. Um, looks like in about an hour and a half, we're going to have some consumer confidence news come out, new home sales month over month. Um, nothing that's going to really move the dollar, um, you know, not like an FOMC or an NFP announcement. So something to just keep in mind. Uh, but if you look at Forex Factory, it's not even listed for today. It's not even considered a, a high impact news event. Um, not something that's really going to, like I said, move the needle. So we'll keep that in the back of our minds, but really light on news this week. Just not a lot going on. And we talked about that yesterday, how that can be a double-edged sword. Uh, you know, we need volatility in the market, but we don't need so much volatility that we can't find a place to enter into a trade. And then we don't want zero volatility because then price isn't moving at all. And we're just sitting in the doldrums of consolidation for days on end, right? So we need that Goldilocks zone. We need just enough volatility to get a currency pair trending and then not so much that we can't then jump into some of the minor retraces that happen uh, because that's how we make our money. Really straightforward, very simple. You know, we keep our trading extremely simple. So if your trading's a little bit overcomplicated, if you're suffering from analysis paralysis, uh, then a good you know, that's a good indication that you don't have a, a good structured trading plan laid out. We don't have, we don't, there's no guesswork when we trade. It's either a setup or it's not, and it's either an exit or it's not. Very straightforward. Take as much of that indecision out of your trading before you even get to the chart, and I, I guarantee you it will pay off big dividends. Now, this is the dollar index. Let's take a look at this, okay? 
and I can't, I can't stress enough how dead on accurate I've been on the dollar index for the past couple of days. Um, good, hey, good morning, Tim. Good to see you in the, in the student room as well. Uh, if you, uh, let, from the students, oh, and let me mute this, sorry. Just monitoring. Um, but yeah, like for the students, all the students are in the chat. Give me a, give me a one in the chat if, you know, like give me a one as a thumbs up if you agree that we have been absolutely dead on with our analysis on gold, or not gold, but uh, the dollar index for the past couple of days. Um, all of these arrows that were drawn out, those were drawn out prior to those movements happening. And the students that have been in the live rooms with me, they can attest to that. So I'm not trying to say that I'm anything great as far as being able to prognosticate the dollar, although I do do it very accurately. I get a lot of ones here in the, in the comment section in the Zoom. Um, but this is exactly what we had predicted yesterday. Uh, we predicted reactions to these zones that were drawn out ahead of time. Um, and then we predicted this rally yesterday. Just it, it just followed the flow of the market. Okay, it's not, uh, it's not like a, an actual prediction. What we're seeing is how the market has been moving. Let's back it up just a little bit. And I know this might be very, maybe even a little more too advanced for some new traders, but I just want you to get this idea in your mind that you know, Forex is a, it is a, a series of repeating patterns and it's a matter of just being able to spot those patterns when they happen. And you can get a very good feel for putting that together with the overall trend of the market and market structure of where currencies are most likely going to head, you know? And that's what we're doing. We're playing this game of probabilities. So you see all these V patterns that have happened in the past. So it wasn't a big ask for me to think that this was going to turn into a V pattern uh, yesterday. And that's exactly what happened. A V pattern meaning that I need to turn my phone off. That's what a V pattern means. No, I'm just kidding. Um, v pattern meaning that we basically will do some type of a retracement or a rally in the Asian and London session. And then we'll see a, an absolute reversal of that in the, in the New York session. And we end up either at or above the same entry price when the market opens. So you see the market opened here. We returned to that price yesterday. We had a retrace and then a big rally and we're currently riding that rally on a couple pairs. Right now though, the dollar very much sideways, very much uh, not a real trend that has happened in the last eight hours. And so the dollar is kind of taking a bit of a, of a pause today. And we'll, we'll add that, we'll factor that into our overall analysis, but the dollar is just looking very, uh, very neutral, okay? Now what we're gonna do is we're going to jump, uh, we're gonna move down the list very quickly and we're going to look at what we call the overnights. The overnights meaning, um, and it might not make sense if you're in a completely different time zone, but uh, for us in the States, in, in the United States, it's morning for the most part, it's morning. And so we need to know what happened overnight, basically in the London session. Has there been any major spikes on any of the currencies that we need to just kind of be aware of that we need to add into our overall analysis. So we're just going to go down the, the row. And this also helps us determine the strengths, the general strength of each individual currency. And that's going to play really big into how we then analyze our setups going into the trading day. Um, and again, using your eyes to do this 100% better than using any strength meter, currency strength meter you can buy on the market. This is 100% free and 20 times more accurate. So here we have Audi CAD consolidating, Audi Swiss franc. We have a bit of a, bit of a retracement, a bit of a dip there, uh, but it has pulled back up since. So no real clear cut winner there. Looks like the yen, very weak, possibly. It's, it's weak against the Audi. So we don't know if that's strength in the Audi or strength in the yen or weakness in the yen. So we'll keep digging further and seeing how does this all piece together. Audi NZD, a bit of consolidation there, so no clear cut winner. And you see Audi USD, this is, our, this is kind of our biggest tip off. We know the dollar is neutral. So if the Audi is not able to push that up or get pushed down by it, then we know that the Audi is about on the same strength level as well. So we had a very strong Australian dollar yesterday. Looks like it's gonna come in as a, a neutral um, currency today. Cat in the Swiss franc, a little bit of a battle there, no clear-cut winner. More weakness in the yen, so we're getting more 
um, we're getting more evidence that the yen is going to be one of our weaker pairs today, but also weak pairs. We we do like to look for uh, rallies in the New York session. So it may continue to be weak or it may rally. And either one we have a strategy in place for. So that's the beauty of it. Um, but I don't see any major difference in any of these right now. So let's add these all to our watch list. So here is our current, here's our current currency strength. This is my currency strength meter. It's notepad in, uh, you know, in Windows. That's, that's how high tech we're getting. And yet this still outperforms, I'll put this head to head to, against any currency strength meter out on the market today. I don't care if it's a thousand dollar currency strength meter. It's just not that, it's not that difficult to see. Good. So we've got neutral category. We've got neutral here. Um, US dollar, I'm also going to put in the neutral category and then we'll leave the yen, which was weak yesterday as well. We'll leave that down there. You see we had that weakness in the yen yesterday, but now we're seeing much, much more weakness. And if we measure this out, that's a lot to move for a Swiss franc base or quote pair. Um, 80 pips, that's, that's big for the franc. If we look at it from the CAD side, let's see how many we're, we're talking about there. Well, even less actually. Of course, I'm not measuring it all the way from the bottom to the top, but still we're seeing big, big pushes against the yen over the last two sessions. That could, you know, that could mean that we'll see it rally in the New York session, but we don't know yet. Uh, Euro looking, it was strong for a bit there and then came right back down. Let's see how it's faring against the other currencies. A little bit weak against the CAD, but right on par with the franc. A little weak against the pound, definitely taking the yen to task. Neutral against the Kiwi and neutral against the dollar. Okay, so the Euro, man, we've got a very flat market today. I don't like flat markets because I, you know, there's not much action for me to actually uh, get on the board and get some trades going with. So hopefully we'll be able to find something this morning uh, interesting, you know. But as always, you know, I always I always hope that we're going to have a great Tuesday session and I can show you guys a lot of great setups, even take some entries on some trades. But we're really at the we're, we're really at the the discretion of the market. You know, we're really at the mercy of the market. Just depends on what the market is giving us at any current point in time. And that's really what's going to determine what the session is like. But yeah, I really, I always hope that we can have a really firecracker session for Tuesdays so that you guys can see what it is that we do. Kiwi's very neutral. It looks like the pound, as unsexy as it is, is still going to be the strongest currency, although it's very slight. The pound is going to take a, a just a slight win today as, as the the strongest of all currencies. You know, it is it is the Highlander. There can be only one. That's not true. There can be tons of strong currencies every day, but today we only have one. So um, everything else looks like we're pretty on par, but very very neutral. So we've got every all these currencies. Uh, the yen is the only one that's extremely weak, as we're seeing here, like on USD JPY. Um, all the rest have been very flat with each other, been no clear cut winner or loser. Um, and then the pound, we've seen it stronger than all of the neutral, uh, all of the neutral currencies, but still not giving us a lot to work with today. That's okay. That is okay. Look at that. Uh, gold, again, staying inside this range. We've talked about this range for... Uh, what is this, about two weeks now, right? So we had that big breakout session, a lot of money made in this, in this uh, bull run, and then a lot of money made on that bearish retracement. And then ever since then, ever since the 20th, um, which was last week, we have been on a watch and wait status. We have not been able to trade gold, and it's because of this ranging consolidation. You know, there's some small movements, but I guarantee you anybody that's been trading has been getting either stopped out um, at break even or taking losses by all of this whiplash or whipsaw. So gold's not really going to be on the plate today. I can kind of I can kind of guarantee that right out the bat, right out the gate, off the bat, whatever you want to say. So that uh, we'll keep that in mind. But here is our here is our uh, our strength, our currency strength meter for the day. And let's jump in. Now let's start looking at some actual setups. Now, for those of you that are 
joining me live on Facebook. <clears throat> yeah, I say that with a slight chuckle. Um, this, uh, you won't have these templates, right? These are our custom templates. Um, these are all included in the Renko course. So if you're interested in that, again, please let me know. I can get you set up with that. Um, let's see here. We do have a question. Um, how do you tell if the dollar is strong and is it listed first? Which the which will the pair move? Which direction? Um, what do you, okay, so how do we tell if the dollar is strong? Well, there's two ways. As I as we just went over, um, but it's okay. I understand if um, new to these sessions, it does take a while to get into the rhythm, kind of of what we do. Uh, yeah, it's one of the reasons why we do it every day, right? Got to get practice in. Um, but the, basically, like what we just did, the two main ways, two things that I'm looking for. First, we're looking at the the index itself. This is the dollar index. That's the dollar up against no one, right? And so we can tell pretty obviously when it's pushing up, when it's got a nice bullish push, or when it's giving us a bearish retracement, that's telling us right there in very plain and simple terms, either it's strong because it's pushing up or it's weak because it's pushing down, right? So we use the index first and foremost. No, you can't get the dollar index on um, MT4, unfortunately, because it's not a tradable in, uh, in instrument. Lost my train of thought. It's not a tradable instrument, it's just a chart showing you information. So nobody trades the, the dollar index itself. It has to be paired up with another currency, either as a base or a quote currency, base being you know the first like USD JPY, quote being the second currency like AUD USD, okay? Um, so that's number one. And then number two is how we see it perform against all the other currencies. Like this is a kind of a game of Sudoku, right? It's not, it takes a little practice, but, you know, like here, I'm looking at it against everything here. It's against the CAD. You know, we see the CAD pushing it down a little bit, not a lot. Here we see the Swiss franc. You see, this is just a lot of consolidation. What I'm looking for is like this. Okay, I want to see is, is the CAD or the franc just really taking it to task or is it taking other currencies to task? Like here, the USDJPY, we can tell that it's very strong. It's either very strong against the yen or it's very weak or the yen is very weak, you know, it's one of the two. And so that's how we kind of piece it all together. So it takes, it takes a little practice, Tim, just keep coming to the rooms and you will definitely get the hang of it, I assure you. All right, let's uh, start with our RTM setups. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna blaze through these um, for, uh, well, this is interesting. Hold on, I gotta check this. Uh, <laughs> somebody, somebody's upset, uh, that's weird. Somebody's upset that we're, we're live streaming. Um, wow, is a, that is some real snowflake stuff right there. Uh, how dare you live stream? <laughs> I have no idea how that would make somebody upset. All right, um, AudiCAD, uh, sorry. So we're gonna be looking at these in the quadrant format. What this is gonna do uh, is it's gonna allow us to scan through all of our pairs very rapidly and then we can, at, as a secondary step, look at the ones that have some type of uh, setup that we could possibly trade in this session, right? So we're just looking for things that are, that are tradable in this session. And we need them to be outside of this blue channel. Okay, this, uh, what that is, this is a triangulated moving average, that's all that is. So what we'll do is uh, we're looking for peaks. So just scan through, all of these are in the middle, basically inside of that white channel. And so we'll just keep going. And we just wanna look for setups that are forming that we can play in today's session. Okay, it looks like we're on. The, okay, so here we have a good example right here. We've got Frank Yen. Perfect, beautiful. We've got that nice first peak pushing outside of the channel. And now it's just a matter of looking for that second peak to happen. So you did not play out yesterday. We can take a look at that in a second. So we've got Frank Yen and just like that. Now we'll keep going and then we'll go back and we'll set up an actual watch list. I'll show you guys how to do that in a second. We'll set up an actual watch list 
um, and then do a little bit deeper of uh, a deeper of an analysis before we set our alerts. Okay, let's see here. No, nothing really jumping out. There we go. Neil, looks like you sounded like you went a little unmute there for a second. It's all good. I got you guys. I got you. Okay. Yeah, nothing really outside the band. Again, and this is going to be the, the byproduct of our very, very low volatility market this morning. But as I've been telling the students for the past couple of weeks, you know, these are summer markets that are finally coming to an end. And we are starting to see a lot of that regular amount of volatility coming back into the charts. And so that, you know, these days of low volatility or low market movement are getting less and less, fewer and fewer as the days go by. Uh, we just, we just happened to catch one today, but we can still find some good setups. Euro JPY, that's looking pretty good too. So we're getting a, a lot of pullbacks from the, the spike that happened against the yen, right? So we're looking for basically that yen rally to happen today. That's uh, definitely a possibility. Let's keep going. Let's see here. G, let's take a look at GJ. Yeah, nice peak happening there. So a lot of the yen pairs, and it's not a coincidence because the yen seems to be one of the only currencies currently that has any volatility to it, even though it's extremely, you know, it's, it's extremely weak. So let's see here. Yeah, so we'll add that in. And by the way, if you guys have any questions um, in the Facebook group, uh, go ahead and post them, post any questions or comments that you have in the live chat and I'll try and circle back and answer all of them uh, before we finish up, uh, to, 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 to. if you'd like to put in the comment why you seem to be angry, <laughs> that's that's great too. I'd love I'd love to know. I would love to know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nothing in here. Let's look at our last profile. Now we'll let that update and yep, all of these are basically in the middle. So not a lot, mostly our yen pairs. That's all right. Um, let's go ahead and we'll set up our alerts. I'll show you guys how we set our alerts. We can set and forget and then just kind of walk away from the charts or at least go uh, look at some of the other charts. Doo, doo, doo. <laughs> All right, now GU did not play out yesterday. We had, we were looking at this peak here and we wanted to see that divergent double top happen, but it didn't happen. We ended up having that US dollar rally and this just shot straight down. So we didn't get a chance to enter into that as far as an RTM setup, um, but that's okay. That is okay. Um, and that's one of the best parts about the way that we trade, about the, our strategies, is if, if the setup isn't there, it's very obvious that it's not there and we just don't take the trade. You know, that you should have very definitive rules when you trade um, either a setup is there or it's not, and there's no, there should be no ambiguity about it. If, there, if you're unsure whether it's a trade or not, uh, you might have the wrong strategy, right? You might need to adjust what you're doing. So the, all I can say is the less guesswork that you have when you trade, the better your trading is going to end up being, okay? Because you don't want to have to try and call an audible 
for to, you know for a football term or American football term, not like a football term. Uh, you don't want to call an audible right in the middle of of uh, setting a trade. You know, not to, not the the best thing. You don't want to be looking at it one way and then right before you enter say, oh, but you know what? I'm going to trade it this way instead. Um, I don't know why. I'm. It's just a feeling that I have. You, know, you don't want to do that. You want to just have a very specific set of rules. And if it doesn't meet that criteria, you're like, hey, I, I'm, I'm on to the next trade. And as I, tell the, as I tell the students, trades are like buses, man. If you miss one, don't worry about it. Another one will be along in 10, 15 minutes. Okay, just the market will pay you for being patient. So here, what we're going to do is we're going to set um, a right there. Okay, we're going to set our upper limit for this first peak. And what we're doing is we're waiting for price to come back up and hit this again and give us a double top or better than double top where we'll see price um, hit this level and then continue to go up making that second peak. So we set that alert. So that if that comes back up and hits and makes a double top, we'll be alerted and we can come back and verify that that setup is actually valid. Now we don't just enter on every double top. Uh, we have to, it has to be divergent, right? So if the setup is good, we'll go ahead and enter in and we don't worry about that bottom alert because it has nothing to do with the, the trade. We just worry about the level that we want to trade at. And so this is going to be the same for, excuse me, for all of these, all three of these, just like that. And we do that because also if we switch between profiles after setting an alert, it'll erase the alert. Right? So we want to have a, a profile that once we've found all the pairs that we want to watch, we set up that watch list and then we just leave it until we get an alert. We just come back and check on it from time to time. So this is our divergent kind of counter trend trade strategy. It's only, we're only looking for 30 to 50 pips off of the 60 brick frame, sometimes larger if we get it on 120. Um, but that's, this is just to add some extra, some extra pips, right? To your overall bottom line at the end of the week. Now let's take a look at our main strategy and we'll talk about what, we've, what setups we've got going on there. So first thing we want to talk about, let's talk about the trade that we've got in motion right now. So the yen is pulling back, or I'm sorry, the, the dollar is pulling back and kind of consolidating right now. So we're in USD CAD. We had a bit of a rejection here at the 200 EMA. Price is definitely struggling there, but we were expecting that. It's one of the reasons why we partialed out most of our profits here before the drop. And now what we're looking for is a place to stack in another entry so if we can get the dollar to rally again in this session, we could see it push up even higher. Uh, but if not, we'll just keep our eye out for our exit strategy. And at this point in time, or our exit signal based on our strategy. And uh, like I said, at this point in time, this trade is risk-free. So I'm really not too concerned about it. We're just gonna let the trade do what the trade is gonna do, okay? Um, let's go ahead and start, we'll go A to Z. And we'll start looking at these setups. And again, if you guys have any questions, um, some of these indicators that are on the screen are, again, our custom indicators that are included with the course. But if you're curious about this triple EMA strategy here, this is very common. This is not anything that I invented. Triple EMA strategy has been out on in Forex for forever, right? We just adapted it to Renko's. And so if you need the stats, the uh, purple is our 200 exponential moving average. And then the, our three uh, triple EMAs are the 12, 24, and 36 exponential moving averages, um, respectively. Okay, uh, bat size, well, we're not using harmonics, uh, so I don't have any bats going on here. Um, but if you mean brick, uh, if you look down here in the bottom corner, you'll always see exactly what brick size we're using. And here we're using 60 point mean Renko bricks. Um, and then that equates 60 points, obviously uh, equates to six pips. Um, let's see here. I see that your offline charts say M27, mine's M26. What's the difference? There is no difference. It's an arbitrary number just as a placeholder for, for your charts. It doesn't mean anything whatsoever. Uh, if you look over here, look on Audi NZD. That's M27 right there as well. So it's just an, a randomly generated number. 
as long as it isn't basically part of the pre-built time frames. So it can't be M1, M5, M15, M60, right? You can have M61, but you'll never see M60 because it can't match an actual time frame. I know I'm getting too much into the technicals of that. Um, so let's uh, let's keep going. But yeah, just to answer your question, that's uh, there's no no differences there. All right, Audi CAD. This is a possibility. We could see a we could see a rejection happen. We're, we're already getting a secondary level possibly here. Now the problem is that we're very close to the 200 EMA. Um, don't tend. I don't typically like to take trades that are that close because it doesn't give us enough chance to bring the trade up to break even and make it risk free um, before we hit the 200. And that's usually what we want to do because when it hits this 200, it's such a strong level of dynamic support and resistance. We're going to see price react to that. And if it bounces and comes back before it actually breaks through, we can get taken out of that trade extremely easily. So. We're going to hold off on that. We could see like a rejection here, but it's just not in a good place. It's not in a good setup for a long-term trade. Here we have Audi Swiss Frank. Um, this is, again, this is kind of a, an ongoing joke that we have going with uh, the, the students. This is the world champion at being the worst, <laughs> the worst currency pair to trade hands down. This is the, the most untradeable chart in Forex currently to date. And the reason why, if we back out just a little bit, okay, is because we're stuck in this range. Do you guys see this range that's been happening forever and a day? You see how many times we've been getting reactions? I drew this range out back here as just a starting range to see how long it was going to stay in there. And we had a bit of a false breakout here. I mean, it's a little bit more than a false breakout. We had a legit breakout, but then came right back down in. And you see how it's just been bouncing between these upper and lower limits forever, forever, forever it seems like. When did, when did we start that, that whole bounce? June 16th, June 16th, right? That's over two months, almost two and a half months that it's been doing this. So uh, audience was frank, not gonna be tradable today again. All right, Audi Yen, we've got price pushing up. This is making an impulse leg right now. So we need to wait for this to kind of top out and give us a good swing high and retrace. And if it does, this would be a nice little entry if we can get a rejection above the 200. Okay, very, very straightforward there. Basically, this is getting ready to retrace. Um, if the yen gives us a little bit of a rally in today's session, um, and we just want a little one, just a little bit, just want that mini cone, you know, this drops down and retests with a little bit of a rally and then heads back up, that's going to be an optimal retracement entry right there. That's, uh, yeah, that's going to be a beauty. So I'll keep an eye out on that. I'm going to put that on the list. So we need to start building out our list. We, we already know that we entered in on UC. Um, yeah, well, look at that. Well, AJ is actually already on there from yesterday. So we're still watching this setup. And, you know, for those of you that are new to Forex, I don't want to burst your bubble, but that's a lot of what Forex is, watching and waiting and being ready. And when the setup actually happens, setups, at, you know, entering into trades is like 5% of Forex. The other 95% is analyzing the charts, waiting for a setup to happen, and then, you know, at the end of it, yes, you do finally get to enter into the trade, but it's a lot more work than just opening up your charts and thinking, hey, that looks great, and then entering into a trade. That's how you blow your account, okay? That's how, that's how you know, novice traders go about their trading day. Let me open something up and see if something jumps out at me. If you've ever said that to yourself, let me see if a trade jumps out at me, you are you are well behind the power curve, right? That's, that's a big tip off that you're not trading in an organized and a professional manner. Professionals do not wait for trades to jump out at them. Professionals know exactly what they're looking for. And if they don't get exactly what they're looking for, they do not trade because again, your job is not 
equity growth. Your job as a trader is equity protection. You are to protect your equity at all costs. And that means, you know, think of your equity as your daughter, right? You don't want to just let them go out with the first, you know, hell's angel biker that pulls up into your driveway and, you know, honks the horn, right? You want, you want to, you know, you want this guy to be thoroughly vetted, you know, and coming from a, a place that you approve of type of a thing. I know it's a weird analogy. Uh, sorry, I've got the, my, I've got a daughter, but um, yeah, you want to look for, you want to trade what you, what you know is going to be a good setup that you've been, been patiently waiting for. So here on AudienzyD, we're still hodling this trade, very frustrating as it's going into consolidation, um, but that's normal for AudienzyD because Audi and the NZD are both very closely linked as far as their economies, you know. So when one is strong, usually the other is strong as well. And we see a lot of sideways consolidation between Audi and NZD. Um, so having to sit through it is pretty normal for AN, but we are 40 pips up on this trade. It's a beautiful trade. We still haven't gotten an exit signal, so we're holding it. And we're just going by our rules. This was a very easy entry off a secondary level. Yeah, and then we're just, we're just waiting. So Audi NZD, still a nice trade. Audi USD, on the other hand, very, very sideways. This one, no, not ready to trade. You see, let me show you this real quick. And it's gonna look ugly, but it's, it's another reason why I don't believe in uh, you know, chart patterns per se. But we're getting kind of this pennant formation. Okay, we're getting a bit of this, this pennant or this wedge formation, however you want to see it. Um, but basically, we're getting smaller and smaller movements. And when that happens, it's usually indicative that a big breakout is going to happen, but you don't know which direction. So you can't just arbitrarily pick buy or sell. We need to wait for it to break out. So the only option is to use like a, a a hedge strategy or a breakout strategy and we don't do that so we'll wait for the trend to actually appear and then we'll look to enter into the trade that's that's how we go about um, looking for setups all right let's keep going <clears throat> doing good on time so we should be good i don't see any other questions all right let's crack on um, that's one thing you should know about me though when you join the trade rooms i do try and throw in as much um trading philosophy, experience, uh, just things that I've noticed, things that I think that you guys should be aware of, soft skills, as I would call them, trading soft skills. So uh, yeah, that's just something. So if you're new to, if you're new to these, uh, I do go off on a, some tangents every now and then, but only if it's something I think is very relevant to trading and that I think will help you guys with your trading. Because a lot of this stuff, did not did not get that type of direction when I was first starting out in trading and I wish I had just some of the simple things like don't trade every day you know that's a that's a that's a shocker for a lot of guys all right let's let's clean this up um, yep not much happening here just a little bit sideways I mean I know we've got this double top happening here we're seeing daily print but we're right above the 200 see how we're bouncing off that. Yeah, I want us to break through that before we look for an actual short trade. CAD Yen's pushing up, kind of forming an impulse leg here, so there's not much for us to do yet. And again, the reason why we're not writing all of these down is because I'm looking for setups that will play out in the next two to three hours. That's my trading session. London, or New York session, opening two to three hours, that's when I trade. So if, if it doesn't look like it's going to pop off in the next hour or two, it's not worth me filling up an entire screen of 20 different pairs that have a possibility. I want, I want ones that are ready to go. Okay. I want trades that are ready to go. Now, Frank Yen, I know we're looking at this as an RTM, right? But we can also look at this as a one, two, three, if that RTM setup fails, like if we get just a straight drop down. Yeah, we can look for some type of a rejection here in this sweet spot. And that would be a nice little one, two, three setup because we've got our impulse leg here. And then we get this, this is our one to two or our A to B leg. For those of you that are more familiar with harmonics, this is just a basic A, B, C, D pattern. So we've got our A to B and then we're getting our B to C that's forming right now. This is our B to C leg. Um, and then C to D is where we would take our 
our trade. Okay, and it's just the 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 letters are just the points of the of the trade. This is considered your A point because it's the beginning. This is your B point because it's the first reversal point. This is your C point because it's your second retracement reversal point. And then the D is way up there somewhere. Your D is like your take profit. We usually use um, reciprocals or Fibonacci extensions for that, like the you know the 127, the 161. You know we look for for um, we look for distant targets like that. But right now this is not fully formed up yet. So we'll keep an eye on it. But this is one that does, that will go in the list. So Frank Yen, let's keep an eye and see if that if it pulls down too far, then it's going to be a one two three. If it gives us just a minor retrace, um, then it will you know it'll be more of a of an RTM setup, and we'll look for it to make a divergent double top. EuroCAD very sideways, as was Euro AUD uh, very very sideways, a little bit of a false break above the two hundred, and then came right back down. So not much to write home about there. Okay, let's close the save some of my processing power. Um, ba, ba, ba. Let's take a look at Euro Swiss franc. Yeah, that's a, that's a big big jump, right? This is full round trip, what we call full round trip, and that, that would be if you had entered into this trade, it would have gone way up. You would have been super happy, and then came right back down to where you started and just stopped you out for zero profit, unless you were aggressively trailing or partialing out at specific take profit points, which we do. So that one's not really anything we'd be able to set up with today. And again, this is a lot of what trading is. You know, don't let, don't let people fool you. Don't let a lot of people fool you on, on the internet into thinking that trading is opening up your charts and finding like five or 10 trades every day, every hour, every 15 minutes, you know, here's one, here's one, here's one. I mean, you can do that, but your, your win ratio is going to be so low because you have such a wide, you know, you have like zero filter for your trades. You're just taking basically anything and everything that has a possibility. You know, that's, that's not the way to trade. A lot of trading is just sitting, looking at possible setups and then just waiting for them to happen. Right. It's a, you know, the very unglamorous life of a Forex trader. I should make just a video of just me with the camera on me, just staring at my stupid face for like an hour of me just sitting here watching charts. And then I'll, make the, I'll upload the video to YouTube, go live, real trading session, see how real tra traders trade. And I'll start out with like an intro that has like a lot of Lambos and, and mansion drone flyovers and, you know, me getting on a jet with, with Grant Cardone. And then it'll just, and then it'll just cut to me sitting there just staring blankly at a chart waiting for <laughs> waiting for something to happen right and that is that would be the truest documentary ever done on a forex trader all right we want to see where euro gpy uh, euro gbp comes to uh, we know that the pound is strong right now so let's see how far that retracement goes down and if it gives us a secondary level you know we'll just add something to kind of watch on to today euro jpy beautiful drop that had happened here and then we got that big retrace. Let's see. Let me clean this up so we can see what we're looking at. Do, do, do. I can see I am not amusing anyone this morning. That is that is my bad. I will I will try to be more entertaining. Um, yeah, a bit of a pullback here. Very shallow. Not really the strongest setup. But one thing I do want you to to show is we're getting this. And remember, we're looking for Euro JPY to do, make that double top, right? Uh, the beginning of a level is a great kind of a confirmation for an RTM setup if this can get outside of the that blue channel that we were looking at earlier. Because if we get a level as a as confluence that this is strong resistance and we will see a retracement, uh, that's that's a very high probability type of a, a setup there, because we're we're combining uh, both both strategies basically. And that's the great thing about our three slash four strategies. What, what, what do you guys think? Should I, should we say it's four strategies or should we say it's three? I'm always, I never know what to say because we've got the RTM strategy, which is our, our counter trend trade. We've got our, our one, two, three strategy, which is our ABCD uh, pattern. And then we've got our levels strategy, but we've also got the golden level strategy and they're both basically the same 
but yet we use them completely differently. Not completely differently, but pretty differently. So I don't know. I don't know whether uh, we'll have to take a vote on that and see if we should call it three strategies or four. I don't know. The marketing side of me wants to say four, <laughs> but the, the trader wants me to say that's ah, really just three. Yeah, you know, three to the last, you know, golden levels are the same. But uh, let's see here. So we have GA. Now, GA is going to kick off basically all of our GBP pairs. And our GBP pairs are the ones that we use our golden level strategy with. This is for more volatile, um, more volatile currency pairs. And a lot of times that's the GBP pairs when we're talking about GBP AUD, GBP NZD, um, of course, GBP JPY, you know, with the beast from the East. Um, so we use a, a little bit of a modified strategy, okay, just so it doesn't throw you guys off. We're just using lower time frame levels, but on a higher brick frame to give us more opportunities to enter into the trends. Because as you can see, with some of these very volatile pairs, it's a long distance between every four hour level, which is what the white and the blue are. These are four hour levels. So we get these minor levels and we have rules for that as well. Here, this is not tradable yet. Um, this is, we've got uh, GBP CAD. We're getting both, uh, day, we got daily double get going on down here. If it breaks above the 200, um, that's definitely tradable. Let's wait for it to break above the 200 and then we'll see if we can't catch a, a long entry on that. Uh, GBP Swiss Franc. Now nope, this one's still, yeah, that one's uh, got levels that are still opposing each other. Um, here we go. GJ. Yep. Nice. But we're coming up on a weekly level. That kind of puts a little dampener on the, the party. That's for sure. So we'll have to, we'll have to kind of watch and wait on that one. Not going to be tradable today because we have to assume that we're not going to go any farther than this weekly level. I mean, if it does, I mean, there's, I mean, of course it can, but we have to assume that it's not going to, that we have to play our trades based on what data we have currently. If it does end up going beyond this, then we'll, we'll adjust our outlook at that time. But, you know, if we get some type of a secondary level here, it's going to depend on how far down it is. If we, if we get a good 60 pips to the, to the goal line, then yeah. But if this just keeps pushing up, there's not any room for us to take any profits out. And again, uh, it's what I tell the students all the time. If there's no profit in the trade, don't take it. That's the whole point. If there's no profit potential in your trade, if you can't see where your take profit levels are going to be, and those take profit levels are not at least two to three times your risk, th there's no point in it. That Then you're, you're, you're being counterproductive to your trading. Okay, there are things that you can do that will accelerate and grow your trading. And there's things that you can do that are actually counterproductive. And that's counterproductive, taking a trade that's so close to a support level or a resistance level that you're not going to, well, you're going to squeeze 20 pips out of that, right? But you had to risk 35, you know, just do the risk to reward calculation. And if it's not there, pass, you know, big pass, hard pass, uber pass, right? Okay. Let's see here. All right. Yeah, no problem, Tim. Uh, well, we do record them all, right? So you, you'll be fine. Uh, I do upload the recordings. And the great thing about the recordings of these rooms are, you know, it's not so much to be able to catch an entry or catch the setups that we're watching today. It's to just go through the routine and to see how we do it and just to get that process just solidified in your daily, your own daily routine, you know, so that you can see if you have questions, you see how we do it and you pick up more and more small details that, you know, will make big improvements in your trading. So yeah, even watching the recordings has great value, even if it's not for taking trades, if it's just for practicing the techniques. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's another reason why we do it, why I have these every day is just to help you guys through repetition. Same, we do the same thing every day over and over again, you know, and that's trading. That's exactly what trading is. Just doing the same thing over and over again and fine tuning it more and more every day to keep getting better and better. Your goal every day should be to trade perfectly. And let me tell you something, I've had that goal every day for the past 
four to five years, and I can count on one hand, I can count on one hand the days that I've actually traded perfectly, because it's just one of those, it's, it's one of those things. You, you shoot for perfection, but you know that you're going to make some small mistakes along the way, and then that's going to allow you to fine tune it that maybe tomorrow you do a little bit better. Just, you know, look for 1% improvement in your trading every day and then see where you are at the end of the year, right? Um, let's see here, GU, yeah, this one's pushing up. You see how we're in this very big range right now, but this is pushing up right now. Um, GBP, it's got some strength to it. We've got an impulse leg that's forming, but we don't have, what we don't have yet is a swing high. When we get a swing high, then we can start measuring the retracement and seeing where we'd be able to get in at. But we'd need the pound to, to at least go neutral. We'd need the dollar to rally. NZD CAD, yeah. To, let's look for a secondary level on NZD CAD if possible. But it's very, very sideways. I don't like to trade sideways markets. We want to look for trending markets. Like we want to see this and not this, right? So, We'll keep an eye on it, but the profit potential is gonna be minimal. Same with NZD Swiss franc. This one looks like it's already taking off. You know, there is a ways to go to the, um, to the 200 uh, moving average. So we've got room, okay? This is, how you, this is how you look and see what the profit potential is on your trades, right? You go from the starting, you go from your entry, you measure it up to where's the first place that is gonna give price uh, either a, a level of reaction, of rejection, or is it just going to give it some issue, you know, some problems? What's, what's going to make price kind of struggle? This 200 EMA is one of those things. And we measure it up, we've got about 60 pips from that entry up to there. So that has profit potential. If we take a 30 to 35 pip stop loss, we're getting around a two to one risk to reward. And that's very, that's very doable, right? But we're not in this trade. Okay, so you have two options on this. And what I'm gonna do, we'll actually come back to this. Okay, let's put a pin in this. Let's get the rest of these out of the way and then I'm gonna show you a pending order technique that you can use um, because when I enter, I don't like to take the market price unless it's the price that I want. And I'm willing to wait for the price that I want. You know, even if it's over 10 pips, I'll wait for my price. So NZD JPY, we're struggling at the 200 right now. That one's not really very solid. We'll wait for that to kind of uh, give us a better setup. That one's just kind of woo, moving. USD CAD continuing to push down. Happens, right? So we're still watching that one. We'll manage that. We've got rules in place. We know exactly how to manage that along the way. And again, we're just, we're not, like I'm not uh, depressed or at all that this is pulling back. That's how, that's trading, right? It's not over until the trade is over. You know, we call these phantom pips because they're not yours until you close the trade. And the market can do any number of things. So to get upset or emotionally involved when trades start to pull back or you know, take some of your, your quote unquote profit away, you gotta let go of that. You, know, you just have to let the trade do what the trade is going to do and try and be as emotionally disconnected from it as possible. Try and trade as robotically as possible, right? Um, and here, I'm just, I'm waiting. I'm just waiting for the next event to happen. It's either going to be another support level that's going to push this farther up, or it's going to come down and this trade is just going to be one that didn't play out, which is okay. As we had a, a hundred pip trade play out yesterday, I've already hit the trading goal that I wanted to for the week. So everything beyond this is just adding on, right? There's so much less stress at that point because I'm not I don't have to make a specific goal. I'm just allowing the market to move uh, and I'm you know, taking positions based off those movements, that's all. And the market will determine whether or not I'm gonna be profitable from day to day. My only concern is trading perfectly. Does that make sense? My only concern is that I trade perfectly and then anything beyond that, it's out of my control. It's in the market's control. And so whatever happens, I can't be upset or happy or, or you know, just angry. Um, I can only be upset if I don't trade correctly. Now, if I make a mistake, I will be upset because that's on me. But if the market, like on USD CAD, this is a perfect entry. This is an absolute perfect entry. And if the market then comes up and comes back and stops me out, I'm not upset. 
because I, I caught that entry perfectly. And the next entry that I catch perfectly, maybe that one goes to the moon, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. So just try not to be emotionally invested in your training, your trading, and try to be very robotic, very analytical. It's gonna, it's gonna save you the hair on top of your head. I'm, I'm telling you, you'll, you'll pull out much less of it if you just accept that you don't have any control over anything but your own trading, your own entries, your own exits, and your own management. That's, that's what you have control over. So if you fuck that up, that's on you. Sorry, uh, pardon my French, I'm French. So I get a pass. Um, let's see here. Oh, good question. What do you think about trading in the zone by Mark Douglas? I've gone through the audio book about six times and read the book two times. Um, I heard you mention him, but I can't remember. Yes, I actually, um, for those of you that want, um, Trading in the Zone is, I think, should be essential reading for all traders. Um, and if you want it, it is free. Go to the file section of our Facebook page. Just go, you know, our Facebook group, files, and scroll down. There's a, a Word document that has a link on it because I, I couldn't put the link in the actual uh, Facebook it's a link to a, a Dropbox account that has all the audio files for trading in the zone. You can have them for free. It's my gift to you guys. Um, but yeah, I definitely recommend reading that or listening to it, um, especially the part about how casinos have an edge over gamblers. And if like take that section to heart, that's one of my favorite sections because we're talking about slight edges over massive amounts of trades or in, in this case, massive amounts of uh, hands of poker. And you'll understand why casinos never go out of business, why they make money year after year after year, and then model your trading after that example. So yeah, excellent book, excellent book. I, I, I listen to it like once every six months, I go back in, I get a refresher because it's amazing how much stuff you absorb and then you kind of discard. And then when you hear it again, you're like, oh yeah, geez, I don't know what. What am I thinking? Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, that, that is true. Okay, here on gold, this is exactly what we were talking about earlier. This is not tradable today because of the current pullback that it's in. We've got strong support, but we've got opposing resistance and we're underneath this 200. Um, all of those things add up to, this is not a trending pair that we'll be able to make money off of today, especially with gold being so incredibly volatile. Um, so gold's off the table. It's what we call risk on for gold uh, because, yep, uh, it means that there is risk, a lot of risk in the chart. And so there's just no trading. Basically, if there's risk in the chart, we don't trade it, pure, plain and simple. When we go to risk off, that means that conditions are favorable for us to make some money and let's get in there and let's make some, let's make some money. Now let's go back to that NCD um, Swiss franc and let's talk about that pending order I was talking about on, on this entry. So this is a legit entry and right now we're really quibbling over what maybe three or four pips. So you have two options here and I showed this in the USD JPY or the USD CAD live room yesterday. You can take a market order and just go from there, you know, just have a very, uh, you know, just lose a couple pips. Or if you want to be stubborn, like I am stubborn sometimes, because I know that in a, a choppy market, this is very likely to happen. I'll just set a buy limit order, right? And I'm actually I've got the wrong amount on there. Okay. Um, oh, actually, this is not the most optimal setup. So I'm going to cut this in half. Whoa, 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 whoa. There we go. I'm going to put five micro lots on this uh, because again, it's a, it's a bit of a weak setup. Oh, well, look at that. This is what I was pretty much saying is that the market's gonna pull back and I'm more than happy to wait for that price. So what I'll do is I'll put a, a sell limit in there if uh, the market will allow me to. Oh, I think, it's, uh, I think it's not going to because it is so close to this price, all right? So that's what we would do though, is if, if it was still up here, I'm gonna set, we would set a buy limit here, buy limit, did I say sell limit? We'd set a buy limit. And so when price comes down and tags this, we'll be off to the races and I'll get that absolute perfect entry right where I want it, all right? But for today, we'll just take a market order buy uh, because 
it's right there. Right? Um, if it's within the spread, it's not going to allow you to do a pending order. It's like, come on, man, it's so close. Just give me my, my broker spread as my commission. So <laughs> we're going to go ahead and enter in here and then we will put on, let's start with a 30 pip stop loss and see how that does. Yeah. Now let's measure this down. Let's see how much farther this is. Okay. So the problem is that we can't put it all the way down underneath this strong level, which is where I usually prefer to do it because this gives us the most, it guards our, our stop loss the best being beneath a strong resist or a strong support level. So for here, we'll just have to take a simple 30 pip stop and go a little less secure, but that's just how this entry is, is playing out. And so from here, when it gets to this area, which we'll now add this into our watch list, when it gets to that 200 EMA, that's when I'll, that's when I'll pull this up to break even. And just like USD CAD, we'll wait to see where it goes from there. If it breaks through this 200, we're talking about some really nice, really nice distance to the upside. We've got a lot of empty space to move up. And then one thing we can do, move up in brick frames to the 120 and we'll place a little bit of a, a level. This is kind of an advanced method. Place a level here at the 200 EMA on the 120 brick frame, drop back down to the 60. So this is basically like setting a level on your four hour and then dropping down to your one hour. And then you see how far this is. This should be our final take profit target. And that's just about 95 pips. It's going to be about 15 pips shy of a three to one risk to reward. Or no, that is with a 30 pip stop loss. That is exactly, exactly three to one risk to reward. No, it's not exactly because it's 94. Exactly would be 90. But you guys know what I mean. It is our three to one. So do you see how that, how we, we look forward to find those take profit targets and we add that into our overall analysis. So NZD Swiss, Swiss franc, this is nice. I'm glad we were able to uh, take an entry on this one. And this is not a one, two, three, this is actually a level. And we entered. Okay, and we'll go ahead and we'll see how that does, right? And you see, it did pull all the way back down. Like if I, do, again, the market will pay you for your patience. If we would have just waited another minute or two, it would have hit this exact level. But two pips, I'm not gonna be upset over two pips. You guys shouldn't be upset over two pips either. You should be able to throw away two pips here, five pips there. You should be able to do that in your sleep. All right, guys. Um, what is the price tag? on top of the buy limit. I don't understand what you mean. Let's see. This, we're talking about this right here. Uh, that's just where, that, that, that number is the level that it will place the buy limit at um, because it's gonna do it wherever I click my, my mouse on. So if I right click here, this is the price that it'll give me. And that's why I like to do the the crosshairs because I can line it like if I'm looking to take an entry right here, I'll line it right up with that price and then right click. Well, I don't want to do that. Right click and then it'll give me that exact level. But you can also adjust, you know, you can adjust those if you want to, if you want to get it just right on, right on target. Okay, guys. Uh, yeah, we went about five minutes, six minutes over, but I think it was a really good session today. Talked about a lot of good stuff. We've got one good trade that we're, we're going to be watching. Um, oops, here's our watch list. Okay, so if you guys want to follow along with us at home, I'll be putting updates on this in the group, you know, showing how we, um, how some of these trades are playing out. Let me close this up. Uh, but yeah, this is, uh, this is what we got going on this morning. So now it's just a matter of going out there, watching these setups, and when they are just right, jumping in, and making some nice profit today. We've got NZD Swiss franc that's running and we'll see how that one plays out as well. But you can see what I'm talking about as far as I did my part. The entry on this is perfect. This is a perfect entry, right? Um, now it's up to the market. Now we leave it in the market's hands and we just manage this trade with very simple and straightforward trade management rules. And other than that, there's really not much else we can do except just lay back, sit back, 
and enjoy the show. All right, guys, thanks for joining me this morning. I appreciate everybody coming in, um, even the angry people in Facebook Live. I appreciate all you guys coming in. Um, thanks for joining me on this Tuesday. Remember, we do this every Tuesday. And if you'd like to join us every day, please join our, or please visit our website at uh, zenfxtrading.com. And uh, yeah, we'll be happy to get you enrolled in one of the courses. This is the, for the Renko course. So definitely check that one out. But otherwise, everybody have a great day. Stay safe. If you have any questions at all, make sure you message me, email me, hit me up in our Discord. I'm happy to answer any questions for anybody, student or not. Um, and otherwise, go forth and make some profits today. And I will see all the students. Good to see everybody as well, students. What's up? I'll see all you guys, same time, same place, tomorrow morning, bright and early. All right, guys, have a great day. Take care, and we'll talk soon.